Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia Word videos. The present chapter is entitled The Factors of Production. In this section, we will try to answer the following questions. How do people satisfy their material wants? How does society satisfy its needs and wants? Can people's wants be satisfied in the long run? Can we have everything we want? Of course not. And why not? Indeed, given the fact that our wants are unlimited and given that resources are finite, we need to economize. The best case scenario is as follows. We maximize our satisfaction with our limited resources, that is to say, we choose how to use our resources to our greatest advantage. So we economize. According to Radog 1992, economic problems arise as the individual or the community has to make the most efficient use of its limited resources and is confronted with the problem of choice. Economics is accordingly concerned with the arrangements that are made for the use of scarce resources. Specific known amount of resources is available to each person or economy. Resources are anything which can be used to satisfy wants by producing goods and services. When we talked about the problem of scarcity, we said that the means of fulfilling our wants are limited and that at any point the world can only produce a limited amount of goods and services. This is because the world only has a limited amount of resources and that these resources or factors of production, as they are often called, are of three broad types. One, land and raw materials which are the natural resources. The world's land area is limited, as are its raw, ma raw materials. Two, we often talk about labor or human resources. The labor force is limited in number, but also in scales. This is very important. This limits the productivity of labor. Three, capital or manufactured resources and capital consists of all the, those inputs that have themselves had to be produced. The world has a limited stock of factories, machines, transportation and other equipment. The productivity of this capital is limited by the current state of technology. There is a fourth factor of production called enterprise or entrepreneurship which is the ability to combine the other three factors land, capital and labor. And here many questions arise such as this one how would you measure the wealth of an economy or society? Where does construction industry sit? And so on. Let's focus on land. Land is a natural resource. It is a gift of nature. It is limited in supply. Land is immovable. The supply of land involves no opportunity cost. As for capital, it's a man-made resource used for further production, such as machines and tools. So it's man-made and it raises the productivity of other factors. Human resources are related to labor and entrepreneurship. Now I will introduce a new concept related to labor supply. It is measured in terms of time or man hour. The labor supply equals the number of workers times number of working hours per worker. The size of population 
the size of working population and the number of working hours are all factors that affect labor supply. Now, let's try to answer this question. How can we increase labor supply? Indeed, we can increase labor supply by increasing population growth, both by natural growth or immigration, increasing monetary rewards, increasing import of labor from other countries, increasing retirement age, for example, from 60 to 70, and by decreasing the school leaving age, for example, for, from 16 to 17. What about labor productivity? Indeed, the average labor productivity equals the average output per man hour. Let's take this example. Firm A, the number of working hours per worker is 240. As for firm B, the number of working hours per worker is 180. The units of output for firm E is 7200. The units of output for firm B is 6400. The average labor productivity for firm A is 30 and the average labor productivity for firm B is 35.6. As you can see, firm B has a higher labor productivity than firm A. How can we raise labor productivity? By better education and training, other factors of production in terms of quantity and quality, by better management or organization, for example, the division of labor, by better working conditions, by greater fringe benefits such as housing allowances, medical care, bonuses, meals, and so on. Let me define now the mobility of labor. We often talk about geographical mobility, which is the ease at it which labor can move from one working place to another, and about occupational mobility, which is the ease at which labor can change from one type of job to another. Now, let's see the factors that can affect occupational mobility. We have the monetary or non-monetary rewards, the uh, increasing of income of the present job, higher opportunity costs in changing job results in decreasing the mobility, increasing the specialization of skills results in decreasing mobility, and so does licensing requirement and higher wage of workers. As for the factors that affect geographical mobility of labor, we can say that they consist in transport, social factors, economic conditions, political stability, immigration, restriction. Eventually, the factor returns consists in the rent, interest, wage, and profits. Now, let's focus on the market for labor. In this section and in the video that we will see later, in fact, this section will be divided into uh, two, two videos. So we, now we will try to answer these questions. What determines a competitive firm's demand for labor? How does labor supply depend on the wage? What other factors affect labor supply? How do various events affect the equilibrium wage and employment of labor? How are the equilibrium prices and quantities of other inputs determined? Let's get started. But before that, we shall, should define the re derived demand. In fact, markets for the factors of production are like markets for goods and services, except that the fact that demand for a factor of production is a derived demand, derived from a firm's decision to supply a good in another market. Now, I will take two assumptions. One, we assume all markets are competitive. The typical firm is a price taker 
in the market for the product it produces and in the labor market. The second assumption is that we assume that firms care only about maximizing profits. So each firm's supply of output and demand for inputs are derived from this goal. Our example is called Farmer Jack. Farmer Jack sells wheat in a perfectly competitive market. He hires workers in a perfectly competitive labor market. When deciding how many workers to hire, Farmer Jack maximizes profits by thinking at the margin. If the benefit from hiring another worker exceeds the cost, Jack will hire that worker. So the cost of hiring another worker is in terms of wage, the price of labor, and the benefit of hiring another worker. Jack here can produce more wheat to sell by increasing his revenue. The size of this benefit depends on Jack's production function, which is the relationship between the quantity of inputs used to make a good and the quantity of output of that good. Now, let's try to draw farmer's jack production function. So, as you can see, it's the relationship between the number of workers and the quantity of output. Now, you should know what does marginal product of labor, often called in abbreviation, the MPL. The MPL is the increase in the amount of output from an additional unit of labor, where delta Q equals the change in output and delta L measures the change in labor. The problem here is that the cost of hiring another worker, or wage, is measured in dollars, and that the benefit of hiring another worker, MPL, is measured in units of output. So, the solution is in converting MPL to dollars. And here we often talk about the value of the marginal product, which is the marginal product of an input times the price of the output. So VMPL equals value of the marginal product of labor price times MPL. Very good. Now let's compute MPL and VMPL. So you should find MPL and VMPL fill them in the blank spaces of the table and then graph a curve with VMPL on the vertical axis L on the horizontal one. This is the answer. Farmer's Jack production function exhibits diminishing marginal product. As you can see, MPL falls as L increases. This property is very common. Now, let's draw the VMPL curve. So, Farmer Jack's VMPL curve is downward sloping due to diminishing marginal product. As for Farmer Jack labor demand, in fact, our task here is to compare the cost and benefit of hiring an extra worker. The benefit P times MPL is extra revenue per week from having one more workers. Recall the production function and hence MPL are measures in units per week. So we must compare that to the cost per week of having one more worker. At any L smaller than L equals 3, as you can see, can increase profit by hiring another worker. VMPL and labor demand for any competitive profit maximizing firm. To maximize profits, hire workers up to the point where VMPL equals wage W. The VMPL curve is the labor demand curve. 
labor demand curve equals VMPL curve and we said that VMPL equals P times MPL so anything that increases P or MPL at each L as you can see will increase VMPL and shift labor demand curve upward now let's see briefly things that shift the labor demand curve we often talk about changes in the output price or P technological change the supply of other factors and as an example if firms get for equip more equipment capital then workers will be more productive MPL and VMPL rise labor demand shifts upward so this is the end of this video the remaining portion of this section will be explained in the next video thank you very much for watching this video